It's nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you. I'm Kim Russo, Eric. Yeah, Eric Mavius. Nice, nice to, to see, see you. you. Have you been here very long? Not a... very long, but I hear you have some questions and some paranormal experiences. I used to live in this house here. I remember coming home one day from school and seeing my father <clears throat> with two uh, uh, bent wires. He was sort of messing around with dousing. That's the first time I'd ever. Dousing Ron, yes. Yeah. Yes, I am familiar with that. And we, um, this is where I would sort of mess around with those things. I came home one day, told my dad, I'm like, huh, they, the rods did a weird thing. Mm. Here? Yeah, 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 right around here. And um, instead of opening out, they crossed over. And I asked him what that meant. And he said that, well, it can either mean that there's water there or someone was buried there. So that's the house? Yeah. That concrete pad there uh, was kind of the invisible boundary. I, I haven't been this, this far into the, this field in uh, 27 years. I never went back. You never went back? No, no reason well, to. Well, there's a reason to now, right? Yeah. So show me where you had your experience. Whereabouts? Well, there were two separate. <clears throat> My brother and I were trying to find a way to sneak into this house. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, went around back, came around the side this here. This way? Yeah. Hopped over the fence. That fence? We were sort of, yeah, we were sort of around here when we first started hearing something. <laughs> what what did and it I, sound like? Well, I thought it was an animal. And it was getting closer to us, and I was really just completely freaked out. We tore back to the house. Didn't really talk much about it. And a few weeks later, we decided we were going to come back out and try and figure out what, what that was. And I looked in, and at the end of the table, they had this, this display set up. Mm -hmm. There was a guy sitting there, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a person, and it wasn't a ghost. How do you know that? I don't know. I'm just saying it was something not, it wasn't quite right. We, we, we could stand here and peer in all we want, but that's not really going to get us to what we need. Oh, boy. I just got a vision of a woman dying in bed in this room. Not here, it's here. And I don't feel there were two beds, I feel there was one, like one big bed. James' um, wife died here. You know, I've been thinking of about this trip here, what I really want to do is spend some time uh, where I had the experience. You know, I was outside the window, but I really want to check wanna the kitchen inside? out. Okay, well, you lead the way. This is strange. Come on in. There's nobody here. Not yet. When I was a kid, there was one long dining table here. This way? Yeah. And where was he sitting? Here. This end. And he just kind of turned his head and looked at you? He noticed you looking in? Yeah, he stared right through the back of my head. And was I just freaked out because I was seeing something I couldn't explain? Or was he angry at me because I was interrupting? It was like he was in mourning, you know? Mm-hmm. There's two gentlemen in this home right now. I want to say one's an older man, one's a younger man. One man has more grief than the other. They're ready to communicate with me. They're ready. But they want to talk to me in the parlor, which may be here in, yeah. in this house. Yeah. First thing that I'm picking up, and please feel free to interject at any point. I'm being shown that what you walked in on was a conversation between a father and his son. I'm speculating one of the gentlemen is Mr. Allaire. The other gentleman is the son. Okay. 
I don't know how many sons he had. If, as I'm asking him, I'm being shown it was his youngest son or the last son born. I, I'm grabbing his name, but I can't make it out. I, I feel like it, be, I, I'm pretty sure it begins with an initial H. And I keep seeing them the son blaming the father for, I want to hear it, tell you exactly how I hear it. You left me with this mess. And the father is like trying to explain to him in a very, very grief-stricken way that he had no control over what happened. Do you want to know what happened to him? The son? No, the father, the James. It, uh, if it ties into what was just said, sure. Cholera was hitting New York. So he moved them here. And after they were married 30 years, she died. She died in this house. And that was sort of the beginning of the end of the good times for the family. There was a horrible uh, ship accident. A lot of people died. You know, he built steamship engine parts. And he was partially blamed for this maritime disaster. He eventually went uh, bankrupt and lost everything. They just told me to light the candle and they'll let our, uh, their presence be known. Right. By the flame, probably, most likely. Would you like to do the honors? Sure. You keep hesitating. Uh-huh. I don't want to answer the question wrong. Well, there is no wrong or right. Yeah. OK, so be careful not to go too close. So we don't want to influence any breath. Or we don't want to move the table with our body. I think I'd be happier if it doesn't do anything. <laughs> do you see what it did when you just said that? No, what it did? It did like a flicker. It did. It might be responding to your voice. Really? Mm -hmm. Try it out. Ask it a qu ask a question. It's James Belair in this house. You see that? Did you think you got a yes on that? I don't know. Well, did you see anything? It's waving its head side to side. It's waving. Well, ask another question. So why would they be showing me a, an argument? I'm being shown that your family was shaken when you moved here, correct? Yeah. The moving away of moving from Massachusetts to here shook the family up. I think um, that my brother, as a result, was acting out a lot, and it kind of was pulling the family apart. The big message I keep feeling is nobody else was meant to live here. There's like this whole energy between the father and the son not wanting any other family to live here. You were supposed to, if you will, get scared out of your wits in hopes that it would deter your family away. It was almost like the heavens were trying to get you on the right path. I, I like that perspective, though. I've never. That didn't occur to me. Well, I'm not saying you were the one that made your mother and father move, but if you look at the series of events, it wasn't long after that you did move. Because I keep seeing if you had stayed, there would have been disaster. If I put all of this together, mm -hmm. everything was driving you guys out of here. So in this big picture, you guys were saved. So why don't we go outside and uh, maybe continue our conversation? Because there's a lot to digest here. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Are you OK? Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm relieved it's over. <laughs> Do you have a whole new take on this? Yeah, I feel, I feel much more at peace. You and your family were guided right on out of here. <laughs> That's what I would say. 